Welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. <laughs> hey guys, Roy is here. Um, I think this is the last day of the last court moment. We had a recess between the last court part and this part because things went off the walls in the courtroom. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not inter <laughs> Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. <laughs> Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. He always does that. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? He did this the other day. I feel like I'm having deja vu. You've got a lot of nerve, pal. Making a detective run around, all around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here? I've seen happier people at funerals. Wait, I'm having like a hardcore deja vu right now. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. <laughs> Here, she asked me to give you this if there was a break in today's trial. Evidence law. Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. You could at least say some evidence law, really. The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him. I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. <laughs> it looks like an evidence law for dummies. Two rules of evidence law. Securely slipped in po into pocket. Doesn't look like that'll book you'll, that book will do a <laughs> you any good now though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth? The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all ruined with this this forged evidence and you were uh, evidence you were unaware of. Emma Sky found out she unwittingly caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal. You're missing the point, Detective. Lana, Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're gonna expose him. No matter what it takes. Because this ultimately this case is the death of Detective Goodman. And that's all that we're actually trying to prove in court. We're not trying to prove Emma's guilt with the previous case. You know, with a, pre with a previous murder. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Yeah. February 25th, 1252, District Court. Courtroom number nine. Hopefully they've calmed down now. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well... <clears throat> Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness, but, uh... <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there's some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh... Struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witness? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone's been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case. The prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further, further witnesses. What? But there's no pr precedent for you for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial, yeah. Very well. The defense accepts the pro pro prosecution's proposal. <laughs> I love this. I love that we're working together. Then it's settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright. You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. Okay. The defense, the defense calls. <laughs> just save it immediately. Assuming we're just going to call Gant. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Yep. 
Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right, bailiff. Please escort Mr. Gant into the stand. Well, to the stand. <clears throat> okay, now, <laughs> it's difficult for me to differentiate. It's difficult for me to do Gant's voice, especially when there's the, the judge. They're so similar in my range. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto, what's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Sure, take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember... If this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. SL9 incident. I was kind of assuming it would jump straight into the, like, hardcore version of the song. <laughs> As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I've had nothing to do with the forgery. Nonsense. Hmm, is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. That sucks. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Doc bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. The, but the him getting stabbed in the back with that with the suit of armor. Why does the suit of armor still have a normal sword on it or have a normal tip on it? He must have hidden the original blade, or swapped it out or something. Okay, Neil and I were christening him that day. As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you, would, you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Doc and made him run away like that. Was the defendant, Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dre when Doc ran, a ran for it. To make a long story short, uh, we, slipped the we slipped out. The power outage just didn't help either. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Doc made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say he got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden, and I got the shock of my life. Well, 
Probably not as shocked as Neil was that when that knife went into his heart, though. That's not funny. When I went to the office, I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shock inside. The knife has already been replaced. Mm. Neil and that serial killer were lying on a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor? Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Someone hit him over the head. Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. I highly doubt that. Apparently she had already ranged the crime scene. How could you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. I think you said earlier. It was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway... As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at the at your office. That's exactly what I'm saying. I can't understand how Lana must have felt. Uh, I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving her body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you'd better, better off start <laughs> staring at the court record. Were they, were they? Always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence. But that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gant to the incident. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be this that I have to... Have nothing to do with the forgery. I'm gonna guess it's, it's something like this. Actually, I should check this real quick. Rule number one. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. I mean, it's either that or this. Let's start off with this, maybe? Yeah, okay. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's the blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Ho! Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit it then, that you were involved in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so, too. Isn't that right, Rado? <laughs> However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Wha- What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. No, he's been fired. Yes, well, in light of the detective's presence. Please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office, and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my, kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. <laughs> evidence and forgery. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. All I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were, disco were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in forgery. 
Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I'm a chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed, I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. Alright, Argy. In return, though. I know, I know, the place r that place, right? Huh? What are these guys telepathic? <laughs> no, no, we're gonna send this guy to prison. Probably know you could have planted those in my office. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know back in the day I once broke into a cattle ranch and tipped. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're gonna need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Rado's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Ugh. I've never faced anyone so slimy as this guy. Okay. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not through speaking yet, Rado. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. They were found after Doc was convicted and they're worthless. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Doc was sentenced. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The Chief is talking about a possibility. As long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however... Oh, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Rido. Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. How could you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now you s now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. I have a feeling I know where this is going. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one large benefit you have reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would of course be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Yeah. <laughs> ho ho ho! Oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, it was already... I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyway. What? <laughs> Gah! Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it's out in the open now. Urgy, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was any... There's no reason I'd participate in forgery. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but only p the only person I care about is yours truly. 
That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. I don't... you don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm, could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, how would he have helped someone out? Point out accomplice. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna save it here. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna do this. True, you might not have, might not help out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. <laughs> Mr. Wright, it appears you're pos positively determined to portray the chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have been helped may have helped forge evidence? Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky, the defendant. <laughs> I believe it, that's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than, more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would have also, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to, if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? <laughs> yes, fucking judge. Oh wait! You must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. <laughs> the judge. I like him too. Uh, admit it, chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Righto, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? She won't she won't say it. Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing. Nothing more than conjecture. Unless that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about Bruce Goodman's murder. The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly where I was hoping this was going as well. Worthy, you'd better watch your tongue. You wouldn't want to get hurt. Just what do you mean? Yeah, this, is, this should be really suspicious. What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant has invoked is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover it, to cover up his involvement. Whoa, whoa, what? What? <laughs> order, order, order! I said order! <laughs> I peeked my mic, I'm sorry. Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious. Huh? This, this is an affront to the highest ranking officer in your and our law enforcement agency to accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's, uh, I, uh, I, impossible. <laughs> Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. It's too late, Mr. Wright. There's no turning back for us now. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Yeah, we're both just like, fuck it, we just have to do this. We have to, we have to do it now, or else everything's gonna go to shit. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved with this murder? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Good question. 
Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then. <laughs> Let's see what Mr. Wright's got, and it better be good. Show us the evidence that Chief Gant that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Ah. <laughs> um. Um. Show us the evidence that, the, that ties Chief Gant to the murder of the te Detective Goodman. Would it be this? It's either this, or it's the phone call about the muffler, and that's like very, that's a few layers deep. Um. It could be this, because <laughs> it's, they're all pieces, they're all pieces that come together. <laughs> these are all really loose threads. I don't know if any of these are the right one. I'm just gonna have to fucking go for it. I'm gonna go with this one. Uh-oh. This is the ID card list. <laughs> the music didn't stop, so it's freaking me out. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. Seven 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 seven. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. <laughs> what? How do you know that? The safe in Chief o Chief Gant's office requires a code to open, a seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean? I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was seven 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 seven. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. <laughs> order, order! Oh, this is great. Chief Gant, why, what do you have to say? <laughs> Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. <laughs> Chief Gant, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? <laughs> what about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have... Detective Good Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him? In days? Chief Gant. I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to Chief... Uh, went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Uh... <laughs> how do I prove that? Um... 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 <laughs> is it this? The fact that he was writing out a, a missing item report? We have so much evidence. <laughs> it's so piled up. I'm gonna use this. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled, a, filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the chief of police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure he filled it. Uh, uh, filled it. He f he filed it. Sorry, if, whether he filed it, he filed it. How do I know? You ask. Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then. You, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on, let me guess what you're gonna say next. Ah, the chief of police murdered poor Goodman. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
But wait! The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. <laughs> Sorry, that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Holy shit! No! Chief Gant, you didn't! <laughs> Holy shit. The murder. The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in the for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue, just taking up space. How would the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. Um... I mean, it's the... Technically, it's the car. It's it's gonna... Be, I'm gonna use the, the screwdriver, I think. This is how he moved the Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is... What is the screwdriver doing here? It's here because... <laughs> he's just... He's putting it together. Ah! I... I was asked to go. By Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here. In the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Yeah. <laughs> Used him. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. <laughs> this is so great. This is great. It'll, this doesn't have the same energy as the Von Kammer one, but like... Oh, it's so good. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it's all the pieces just like falling into place. All the evidence is finally being useful. All the pieces of evidence that were like a waste of my my evidence uh, list. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. The scent of Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Yes, unless of course you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Skye. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal in the def to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This is not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, Rado, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. No, you're not going anywhere. But the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier. The police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse testimony. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is only... That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. We should consider him immediately guilty if he leaves. So you're going to just run away after all this. Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. 
I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations around him without concrete proof. I'm gonna save it now, while I have the chance to. Often I keep going into the evidence thing without having being able to save. Uh, court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Miss Sky dispose of his body? Do I have any concrete proof? I was just gonna say present evidence. Because if, we say, if I don't present something, then he's gonna leave. I can't let him just squirm his way out of this. I've gotta keep the pressure on. Yes, Your Honor. I do have such evidence. Then please hurry up and present it. Just remember. A better proof uh, Chief Gant murdered the Detective Goodman beyond a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> it's either this or this. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't know if there's anything super strong in any of this. Let's just present it. If I'm wrong, then I can I can uh, fix this. I can just load my save. So, uh, what exactly is this evidence? It's proof as to whether or not, as to whether or not it's enough to demonstrate the chief's guilt. I'll let you be the judge. But I am the judge. Oh, right. Well, what do you think, Your Honor? What do I think, Mr. Wright? I said I'm gonna be late for lunch. Guess <laughs> it wasn't enough. Please, Your Honor, give me a little longer to consider. Say it again. Okay. Um, I have no proof yet. Let's just see what happens if I say that. There's no use showing evidence. I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm, <clears throat> CRG? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Rido. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, RG, I'll leave the rest to you. I'm gonna guess where I'm gonna- I'm gonna have to just load. <laughs> it's... I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to the senior officer of our nation's law enforcement agency. What? <laughs> I was gonna say... Lazy luck, hmm. Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gant has evoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else, one more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Him. <laughs> Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling the witnesses today. <laughs> Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? Yeah, it does. I had a feeling I might have to just concede that one. Um, Sheena may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can just stop. We can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth. Uh, Lana Sky. The defendant, Miss Lana Sky. She was, in, she was in the underground parking lot at 5.15pm on February 21st. Her task, to dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth! The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well, the court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we'll convene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in... Re... Hold on. Huh? Oh, hold on. Huh? Chief, Chief Gant, I thought you were going to eat. Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there'll be terrible consequences. I mean, this should right here be proof that he's like trying to manipulate the witnesses and stuff like that. 
That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. That's the whole point. This isn't good. Of course, you'd never support such an outrageous claim anyway, right? Just something to think about. All right then. I've got a lunch date to meet. <laughs> I think the judge should see. <laughs> the judge, why is he so just? Ugh, it's so obvious and and like blatant. <laughs> it's so obvious and blatant. I don't see how anyone can just go along with this. Okay, if there aren't any further objections, this court is now in recess. I'm gonna try and keep going. I'm just gonna try and finish it in this episode. Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief, he's something else, huh? Hey, pals, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Ah, oh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. <laughs> oh. Wait, in the next game is he gonna be? No, he's not. He's not, is he? Because this this came out. This episode came out after the second and third um, games were were <laughs> the second and third games were made, and then this episode was added to the first game. So it's it's unlikely that this will happen in the second and third game. Actually, I'm really curious about that. Will Gumshoe not be a detective anymore? Oh no, I bet I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty certain by the end of this by the end of this episode. Gumshoe is going to get his job back as, as a detective. That's what's going to happen. It's going to wrap up like that. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of the... I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Could he mean Maya? Yeah. Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gant's done it again. How is it? He always gets the upper hand. It's not fair that he has the right to refuse to testify. Hmm. <laughs> Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But Chief, that's not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite holds true. Um... Who's saying this? You mean he forfeits his rights to say anything too? Lana? Oh, you mean he forfe forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma, are you okay? Yeah. When I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as Chief Prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders, she must have shut herself up deep inside. To force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait? No, I'm going with you. I want to be there. When Lana tells the truth. It's probably useful to have Emma in there. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. <laughs> There's another to be continued. Do I do a th another episode again? Yeah, I think I will. I think I will. I think I have time. I think I think in terms of my schedule, I have time for I have space for one more episode. I thought we were gonna end it in this episode, but yep, took too long. So. <laughs> We're so close. We're so close. Let's just get this done. If you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. Until the next episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Until the final episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney.